Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. Uh, Dr. A. Olson. All right, thank you. Um, now, there were some concerns uh, brought up uh, regarding cultivation at home, uh, particularly with, um, uh, you know, quality control, where, you know, where would be the quality control when someone's uh, growing it themselves? Uh, and what are the safety um, considerations? Now, for a very long time, people have been able to brew their own beer and wine at home. Um, and can I ask how similar or different this provision would be from uh, the currently existing ability to do those activities? So I, I think I would say a couple things about cultivation at home. Uh, one is a, is a point that the task force recognized in its report is that, uh, uh, you know, there are many circumstances where individuals grow uh, a, a small number of plants and can mm. do so safely mm -hmm. uh, at home. Uh, of course, as the, as the health regulator, uh, we will want to do our part uh, to make mm -hmm. sure that Canadians are aware of the potential, you know, risks associated with mm -hmm. cultivating uh, uh, cannabis at home. Uh, you know, under the, the current medical access regime, there are provisions that allow people to grow cannabis at home for medical purposes. We undertake extensive uh, education to try mm -hmm. to help Canadians be aware of some of the precautions they should take. So just for example, you know, we will want to actively encourage Canadians to take measures to protect children, right, mm -hmm. to keep it, whether it's indoor or outdoor, uh, to, to protect uh, children from accessing it. Uh, we also encourage, uh, you know, Canadians to make sure that there's enough ventilation, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if they're growing, particularly if they're growing indoors. You want to be able to remove, you know, excess moisture uh, on the plant, which could cause mold or, or in your buildings. Um, if they're going to use chemicals, uh, mm -hmm. such as pesticides in the growing, we'll encourage them to, to have a look at the very important information that we have av available. So there's, there's, those would be an active part, I think, in our efforts to ensure mm -hmm. that, uh, that, you know, if Canadians choose to do this under the new legislation, that they're well informed about the things they should take into consideration. Okay, thank you. Uh, are, are, um, is Health Canada aware of any widespread untoward events? Um, or, or widespread health problems regarding these pre-existing um, practices of making wine and beer at home? Hmm. I'm not in a position to answer that question uh, mm -hmm. that the Honourable Member has put. Mm -hmm. um. okay, no, that's fine. Thank you. Okay. Now, uh, I had some, um, uh, you know, I had a town hall on this subject uh, a number of weeks ago, and uh, I was approached by some retailers in, uh, in uh, my riding uh, who sell uh, accessories used in uh, smoking these products. Uh, in the vernacular, they're called head shops. Um, they were worried whether, uh, you know, what, in, in regards to, you know, legislation on the promotion of this, uh, how might this legislation uh, affect uh, how they would do their business and what they might have to do differently under the new legislation. Mm -hmm. That's, uh, yeah. mm -hmm. So thank you for the question. So the question of accessories uh, is dealt with mm -hmm. in, in the proposed legislation. Um, and I think the, the easiest way to understand what's being proposed is to say that the um, there's, there is no proposal mm -hmm. that the government would regulate the production or the manufacturing mm -hmm. of those products through this, through, through this act. However, uh, as it pertains to the sale, mm -hmm. uh, as well as the promotion and marketing of mm -hmm. those activities, they would be captured. And so in many instances through the act, you'll see the provisions, for instance, those that apply to advertising and promotion, uh, apply equally to cannabis that will be consumed, as well as accessories. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. thank you. That's helpful. Now, uh, I just wanted to clarify something that uh, I, I, I believe I know the answer, but I, I just want to make sure it doesn't get uh, uh, lost here. Um, now, let's say that um, you know any one given province just simply says, "We're not going to be ready by this time. We're not going to do anything. We're just we're just out." Uh, can someone in that province? Um, obtain cannabis through uh, any online or, or mail order system? Uh, 
So uh, thank you for the question, Mr. Chair. Uh, so this is the the uh, that mm -hmm. uh, the question that we were discussing earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, so the the legislation, of course, is designed uh, so that provinces and territories uh, can can occupy that space and, and be responsible for sale and distribution. Mm -hmm. In the event that uh, they are unable to do so. Um, mm -hmm. uh, by the, the perspective coming into force of the legislation, uh, we will put in place uh, a mechanism whereby the federally licensed producers mm -hmm. would be able to uh, provide uh, product directly to uh, you know individuals in that province or territory. Uh, and I think you know the the importance of that uh, is is that the government has recognized that it would be very important uh, upon. Uh, coming into force of this legislation and that adults are allowed to legally possess cannabis, that there is a legal supply of quality controlled uh, cannabis available to to anyone, you know, right across the country. Mm -hmm. um, so that we will have that uh, that ability to do so. All right, thank you.